I always thought a keyboard is a keyboard. There's only so much difference a fancy mechanical one can really make for me as an audio engineer and content creator, right? Boy, was I wrong. This is my first mechanical keyboard and I kid you not, it has completely transformed how I work. I mix and master music, edit videos, and write video scripts for this channel. And this mechanical keyboard here just makes doing all those things a whole lot easier. Like, I literally did not realize that a great keyboard can make this much of a difference. And that's why I'm really excited to share my experience with you today. Because I'm sure there are others out there like me who don't realize the importance of their keyboard. So there's one thing about this keyboard that has really helped my audio and video work. But before I get to that, I just wanted to mention how incredible the build quality of the Q1 Max is. It's fully made out of metal and you can literally bonk someone's head with this thing and do some serious damage. Holy sh- No. This thing is hefty. When I first held this in my hands, I remember thinking, this is like the definition of a premium keyboard. And I needed this in my life like yesterday. The Q1 Max also has a bazillion layers inside. I have no idea what they are, but I believe they're the reason why the keyboard sounds so good and is so ridiculously comfortable to type on. Like, I could not believe that typing could feel this amazing when I first type on this keyboard. I'm not sure um, how it compares with other high-end mechanical keyboards, but coming from a lifetime of using laptop keyboards and cheap keyboards, this is just, I don't even know how to describe it. You really have to experience, uh, experience it yourself to really understand. Every key press is like a dose of dopamine straight to my brain. There's absolutely no going back for me now, and I finally understood why mechanical keyboards are so popular. The switches I chose for my Q1 Max were the Gateron Jupiter Brown switches. They have a tactile behavior, which just means that you will feel a bump when the key is being registered. I don't actually feel the bump when I'm just typing. However, I find that the tactile feeling is really great for when I'm mixing music or editing videos because I press and hold down certain keys a lot and having that solid tactile feedback with a travel distance of four millimeter is so much better than my MacBook Pro's keyboard, which only has about one millimeter of uh, travel distance. The keycaps on the Q1 Max are made out of PPT plastic. To be frank, I had no idea what that meant, so I did some reading. Basically, keycaps made out of PPT plastic is very oil resistant. You know how MacBook keyboards and many other keyboards become shiny and greasy looking after a while? Yeah, it's supposed to take a lot longer for PPT uh, keycaps to look like that, if they would at all. Obviously, I can't really verify this on the Q1 Max as I only have it for about a month at this point. But I haven't come across a whole lot of complaints about keycaps by Keychron, so I would assume these will hold up really well over time. Windows keycaps are also included, by the way, for you PC master race folks. The one feature of Q1 Max that I found to be monumentally helpful for audio and video work is the knob. By default, it controls the volume of whatever is playing on your computer, which is already a lot more intuitive than using buttons. But you can actually remap the knob to control anything else, and that includes any knobs or faders in your DAW. Take a look at this. I have Pro-Q3 open in Reaper, and I can actually use the knob on my Q1 Mac to change any of these knobs. Here I have an M-SIM, and I can do the same. I find this to be way better than dragging with the mouse or using scroll wheel, not only because the keyboard knob is much more similar to the knobs on a plugin's GUI, but also because it's easier on my uh, wrist and hand. After years of clicking and dragging with the mouse is taking a toll on my right hand. And so the knob on the Q1 Max really helps with alleviating the strain I put on my on my hand. I know there are DOS controllers out there with tons of knobs, but I don't want a whole separate thing. So this is pretty much perfect for my use case. If you're liking this video so far, please consider giving it a like and subscribe. I would really appreciate your support. Now, this knob is even more handy for video editing. I create and edit videos for a living, and I work mostly in Final Cut Pro. 
The biggest game changer for me in terms of efficiency is being able to change the position, scale, and rotation of a clip with this one single knob. These three properties are often changed in combination, like I often like to punch into a close-up and then reposition the framing accordingly. Or I have a graphic overlay that I want to position somewhere in the video. Normally to do this, you either have to do it in the inspector, which involves clicking and dragging or typing in the value, or you could use the transform tool in the viewer, which is very hard to be precise. And you will also lose the transform handles once they are out of the viewer. And then you have to zoom out to use them again. Both methods are just slow and involves many steps. With the knob, however, I have programmed it so that just by pressing some modifier keys, I can move up, move down, move left, move right, zoom in, zoom out, and rotate using just this one knob. And I don't have to look away from the viewer to use my mouse at all. Hell, I can even move forward and backward frame by frame with just the knob. It's a huge game changer for me. It just makes video editing so much faster and easier. If you are a content creator and edit a lot of videos, I think you'll really benefit from this. The knob isn't just useful for professional work either. I love using it as the replacement for the scroll wheel when I'm just scrolling web pages, like reading an article. It just allows my wrist and arm to be at a much more comfortable position. This might seem very unimportant to you, but as someone who works in front of a computer day in and day out, ergonomics becomes really important in order to avoid any strain and injury in the long run. The QM Max is compatible with QMK Via, which is basically open source software that allows you to remap every single key of your keyboard. And it's how I configured the knob to enhance my workflows. I assigned the scroll up and scroll down commands to the knob to control plugin parameters in the DAW and obviously to scroll web pages. To control the position, uh, rotation, and scale in Final Cut Pro, I use a combination of QMK via and command post. It does require a bit of setting up, so I'm not going to cover that in this video, but please let me know in the comments if you would like to see a tutorial for that. The knob has really quickly become uh, something that I cannot live without now. Just like everything else in life, the QM Max has its flaws, and I believe you deserve to know about them before purchasing. The biggest one for me is that I wish Keychron built their own in-house software for their keyboards. This is for two reasons. One is that although QMK Via is super powerful and fairly straightforward, it's still definitely not the most user-friendly software. Uh, depending on what you're trying to configure, you might have to look at tables of key codes. And it feels like it's designed more for people with a programming background than noobs like myself. For example, just to map command equal sign and command hyphen to the, the knob, I had to first create a macro for each and then map the macros to the knob. The software also doesn't really tell you what you need to type to map a specific macro to the knob. So it took some Googling for me to figure that out. I wish I could just assign the shortcut straight to the knob. The second reason why I wish uh, Keychron had their own software is that I wish I could have different mappings or layers on a per app basis. Like one when Final Cut Pro is in focus, a different one when Reaper is in focus, and so on. You cannot do this with QMK Via as far as I know, but I know there are keyboards out there that can do this with their own software. It would seriously take this and all of Keychron's keyboards to a whole new level when it comes to productivity, especially for professionals. Another thing I'm still getting used to, and this is going to be very relevant for people who are used to Apple's keyboards, is that the sizes of the three modifier keys and their placements in relation to the row above is very different than those on Apple's keyboards. You can see that on Apple keyboards, the command key is always right under the X key and the C key is left aligned to the space bar and is diagonally right next to the command key. On the QM Max in comparison, the command key sits much further away from the C key and is under the middle of the Z and X keys. Similarly, the option key on Apple's keyboards is almost right under the Z key and the control key is not that far from the Z key. On the QM Max, the option key is to the left of the Z key and the control key is almost a whole key away from the Z key. This really messes my muscle memory and I keep having to look down at a keyboard whenever I need to use the modifier keys. I've heard people say that Keychron is very Mac friendly and I wish they had made 
these modifier keys more similar to Apple's keyboard's layout because I use all these modifier keys a lot and this has really slowed me down at the beginning. I have a few other small gripes with the keyboard such as not having the dictation, spotlight, and do not disturb shortcut on a function roll. I use them very frequently. The FN key being on the right side of the spacebar instead of the left like Apple keyboards. And the lack of language switching key. There are a ton of useful native shortcuts associated with the language switching key and I'm really bummed that I no longer have them on the Q1 Max so I can't use those shortcuts anymore. These are by no means deal breakers and they might only be pain points to you if you're used to Apple keyboards like I am. The Q1 Max keyboard is definitely worth having if you type a lot and especially if you work in a doll and or if you do a lot of video editing. I'm very rarely so head over heels for a product in any of my review videos but this keyboard has brought such drastic improvement to my day-to-day -day professional work life that I feel really good about recommending this to fellow audio engineers, video editors, and content creators. If you happen to prefer more keys or less keys, different switches, or different colors, Keychron has a ton of options you can choose from. That's it for the video. Give it a like if you find it helpful or informative. And don't forget to subscribe if you want more content or music production, tech, and content creation. Stay creative, and I'll see you next time.